So today we're pouring concrete in freezing temperatures. Let me show you how we do that. As you can see, everything's frozen over right now, but it won't be long. It'll get above freezing and we'll be able to start pouring concrete. It's 27 degrees right now and climbing. So as soon as we get above 32, the plant is gonna send us concrete. We're gonna start pouring. Uh, the plant is frozen right now. So even if we wanted to start uh, pouring concrete, we can't. It's okay to pour at 32, 33 degrees. That's not a problem. As long as the temperature is rising, okay? Today, the forecast calls for a 60 degree high, and tonight, the low is 40, all right? So it's not gonna be a problem. You wanna make sure that you're going to be above freezing for at least 48 hours after you pour concrete. Uh, I mean, you can cover the slab, you can do all kinds of things, but to be absolutely certain, you wanna make sure that you're gonna, at least that night after you pour concrete, that it's not gonna freeze. That's gonna be the case here. Uh, again, everything's on standby right now. You can see the pump in the background. He's starting to set up. But un until we get above freezing, we're not gonna pour. It is, uh, we're scheduled to pour at 7 a.m. It's 7.15 right now. Uh, I imagine another hour, hour and a half, we're gonna be able to pour. If I was gonna pour this yesterday, that would have been a problem, because it, it got down to 25 last night. So that's not a good thing. So here's the slab. Uh, this one's also post tension. I'm really liking this post tension. We're getting a lot less cracking on our slabs, if any, I mean, uh, I checked out a slab yesterday that we poured last week and there was not a single crack on that thing. They were, uh, I was there when they were stretching the, the cables and everything looked good. I mean, I'm again, I'm really liking these, uh, the post tension results that we're getting. Now, that's not to say that we're not using rebar at all. As you can see right here, that's where uh, anchor plate is for the columns. And you can see there's a lot of rebar in there. That's all number five rebar. The uh, the post tension cables run all the way through. And uh, you know, they go from one side to the other. Um, you know, here in the beams, we have another cable. So, I mean, it's not to say that we're not using rebar at all. Here's our AC pad, there's rebar in there. Every single one of these uh, plates has a pier underneath with rebar. So even if uh, we were to remove all the concrete around those piers, this building would still stand just fine. It's got plenty of footings here. Uh, again, this is a four inch slab, but you can see all the footings that it has in it, all the support beams. Not all four inch slabs are the same. Uh, you know, you can have a four inch slab that's meant to be simply a driveway and that would be also called the four inch slab without any interior beams. So again, not all four inch slabs are the same. You can see all the PEX lines in here. This is a shower right here. And you can see where the shower is. We dipped the concrete. It's a, it's a little thicker so that we make sure that we have enough concrete under the shower because it's going to be dropped we have a six mil poly on everything for a vapor barrier. So, you know, that's how it's done. This has all been engineered. Uh, we had a pre-pour inspection yesterday. Everything looks good, so we're ready to pour. You can see here how it's anchored to the forms. See, you're supposed to tape all these. What we do is we simply take a sleeve and split it and put it over the cable there at the end. It's full of grease there. So uh, you just don't want to get any concrete on the cable itself because that'll keep it from sliding when they go to tension it. So this is how it's done. When we pour, we're gonna make sure that we vibrate the concrete, especially around these anchors because this is where they're gonna stretch the cables from. You can see the ends of the cables. They stick out out here. So when they pull the forms off, They'll come back and they'll hook a machine there and stretch that cable up to about 7,000 PSI. And they'll do the same to all the cables. And that's why we have to wait for the slab to be at least seven days old. Well, five days really, but five to seven days, and then you can apply full tension to all the cables. So uh, the sun's coming up. So uh, 
I say another hour or so, we'll start pouring concrete. Here's a, here's a one thing that's very important. Every time you have a what I call an inside corner, uh, you need these diagonal rebars. Cracks will always try to develop from that corner in, so you always want these diagonals. Uh, if you have your slab engineered, that's a pretty standard thing. But anyway, don't forget those diagonal bars. They will, again, you will get a crack right here if you don't put them in. Very important. Here's the anchor plates that we use. These are half inch anchor plates with uh, three quarter inch rods welded to that, to that plate. So pretty heavy duty all the way through. So as you can see here, they're running the vibrator. It is extremely important to vibrate the perimeter beam, especially when we're doing post tension. All these uh, anchors right here need to have uh, concrete vibrated all the way around to make sure that you have uh, a good solid contact between the anchor and the concrete so that when they uh, stretch the cable to 7,000 PSI, that anchor is fully supported. So again, extremely important to vibrate. And that's what they're doing over there right now. So we're having to be very careful here. It's still pretty wet from all the rain we've been having. And uh, one of the concrete trucks pulled off the road to let another one through and he almost got stuck. So what we're having to do is we're having to stage them outside the okay. gate, out on the road. And uh, we make sure that we get them all out of here before we bring another one in. So as you can see, we're having to do a balancing act over here. <sighs> this ground is starting to break through. It's really wet underneath and these trucks are pretty heavy. So what we're going to do now is going to bring the trucks head on, get over here next to this blue car and then get that truck out of here. Then the next one came back right up to the pump and then pretty much keep doing the same thing until it no longer works. I mean, you can tell right here, it's getting pretty bad. So as I was saying, you have to adjust with the conditions. Uh, it's never easy, especially after all the rain we've been having. Uh, you know, a road that looked perfectly fine this morning no longer looks like it did. So again, we're gonna take it slow, keep it safe and uh, keep it efficient. What a difference a driver can make. So this started to get real bad. You can tell they're dragging their pumpkins right there. Uh, you can tell how much deeper this is. So we got a couple more trucks and I think what they're gonna do now, they're gonna ride the highs on this road and hopefully we can get it done. They're gonna catch enough momentum coming down 
to hopefully get through here. Uh, of course, the minute you get through there, you get into here. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, it's all fun and games until somebody gets stuck. So you can tell how flat this bump cutter makes the slab. The first time he made a pass, you could tell it wasn't as flat. You can tell how much concrete it's shaving off. It's not much, but it's enough to make it flatter. So anyway, just one very important step in the way we do concrete. There's a small hump right there that he's trying to get rid of. You can tell right in the middle of the, of the straight edge is loading up. But he's almost got it. There it is. It's almost 3 p.m. and the last truck finally showed up. About 11 a.m. the uh, plant broke down and uh, that really slowed us down. Uh, we got everything else poured out. The problem is we only have about two and a half hours of daylight and once the sun goes down it really slows everything down. So on the porches here we went ahead and got 3500 straight sack which is uh, it just has a uh, more cement that's gonna allow it to dry faster. We're hoping it'll dry real fast so that we don't have to wait here real late so anyway we'll see how that goes. As you can see we already started traveling uh, the slab, we already have the machine on here with the with the floating pan, but you know we only got about three quarters of the way there and then the rest of it is still kind of wet so again I'm hoping the sun stays out long enough to where it'll help us out. We don't have to stay here too late. So when you order 3000 PSI concrete, the regular 3000 PSI has 80% cement, 20% fly ash. That gives you the strength that you need, but it's not going to dry as fast. When you order straight sack, that means they'll give you 100% cement. It's going to be a little more expensive, but you will get 100% cement content, which is going to make the concrete dry faster. Now, if you want to go to the next level, you can order uh, straight five sack. What does that mean? Well, five sack is 3,500 PSI. And again, straight will give you 100% cement that's going to dry even faster than your uh, straight 3000 so again when you only have a short window of daylight or you know sunlight where uh, the sun's going to help you dry the uh, the concrete you really want it to be pouring straight cement okay so again in the winter we always pour straight tech we always get a winter mix which means no retarder whatsoever because it doesn't matter if you go straight sack, if they put retarder in it, it's gonna defeat the entire purpose. So make sure it's, it has no retarder in the mix. And uh, again, you know, you can go, uh, a 3000 PSI concrete is four and a half sack. Uh, five sack is 3500. I mean, you can go 4,000, 5,000 PSI if you want it to really dry fast. So anyway, just keep that in your tool belt. Do not use fly ash in the winter because it's going to take longer to dry. So as you can see this portion of the slab has been pan floated and now we're running the other machine with a poly blade. I'm telling you I'm really loving these poly blades. They give us a really nice finish that really works well for uh, staining concrete.
Look how smooth that machine's running. That's only because of the pan float and the bump cutter. There is no humps on that slab. Well, as you can see, we're losing sunlight pretty quick. It's a nice sunset though. So anyway, as you can see, we're still here. We're starting to turn on the lights. Because again, this is going to be a while. Now, well, now that the sun went down, it's really going to slow everything down. The porches are still pretty wet. I did get 3,500 uh, straight sack. But again, once the temperature drops, it slows everything down. I mean, it's only 5.30 p.m., but my goodness, it gets dark early now. And uh, I don't know, this daylight saving time doesn't really work for construction, especially for concrete. So you can see right there, starting to slick off pretty good. You can see with the lights, but so that's done right there. But right there, see, we had shade from these trees right here, and that's why it slowed down this area. I mean, this is the first area that we poured, but right here, right in the middle, that's where the uh, sun was shining on it the entire day, so that's pretty much done. This out here, we got this far to where he's standing there with the light, and the rest of it right there, you can see how wet it is. That's when the plant went down and the trucks just took forever to get here oh man it just never fails something always has to go wrong uh, as far as the pour itself it you know it's going really good I mean this is gonna be a good slab it's drying really slow which as we all know uh, that's a good thing for concrete you want it to dry slow but it sure makes for some really long days so the reason they're doing this by hand is these trowel machines are pretty heavy. So every time they run a trowel machine over the slab, it brings up moisture. That's how it, it's able to uh, polish the concrete in a way or finish it. So as you can imagine, the last thing we want right now is more moisture. So they get on their, on their hands and knees and they trowel it by hand. Now this is hard work. I mean, these guys make it look easy, but it's not. You have to apply a lot of pressure on that trowel to be able to get a good finish. You can see this guy right here. He's even using two hands because it, it requires a lot of downward pressure on that trowel. You can tell from here how good of a job those poly blades do. I mean, you can really tell on the, the way the light is shining. Now, here's another thing of why I like the bump cutter and the uh, floating pan. If you look at the light, typically on a conventional slab, it would look a lot like the, uh, like the ocean. It would have just a bunch of waves. And here you can see that light is just shining straight at me that tells you the slab is flat uh, <clears throat> next time you uh you're out and about and it's dark and uh you're outside and or even a, a, a sidewalk when you're shining your lights just pay attention to how wavy concrete really is you can really see it at night so this is a really good representation of what it's going to look like once we seal the concrete if the uh if the slab is not flat once you put the high gloss sealer on there, you're gonna see every wave in that concrete. And man, I absolutely hate the way that looks. So that's why we go through so much trouble to make sure these slabs are as flat as can be. These guys are having to do the, the last of it by, by hand again so that we can uh, get out of here. If we put the trowel machine on there, it's just gonna delay it for another two hours or so. So we're broom finishing these porches to make sure we, you know, our customers have a good grip. Now, typically these porches are broomed side to side. I like to broom them up and down. It just makes them a lot easier to clean.
we finally got her done. It's 9 p.m. right now. It's been a very long day, as you guys know. Uh, you know, we tried to get started really early. It was too cold. It was 27 degrees this morning. We had to wait about two and a half hours for the uh, temperatures to uh, go up enough to where we could pour concrete. Uh, we got started about 9.30 a.m. We lost a couple of hours. We had issues with the road because it's so wet. You know, these days when it's cooler like it is now, it's just, it, it, they're just long days, right? Concrete does not dry as fast. I mean, I told you about doing straight sack, that helps, but man, once, once the sun goes down, everything just slows down to a crawl and that's what happened to us you know we had the plant go down about 11 a.m and that really slowed us down but anyway it's done now i'm really happy with the end result it does make for better foundations when they dry this low i mean uh, it's already it's it's about 45 degrees right now and it's supposed to get down in the 40s you know low 40s tonight tomorrow's going to be in the 60s again and then uh, two nights from now it's going to be again in the 40s so i mean this lab you could not ask for better conditions for uh, for this lab to cure we're going to give it about five to seven days we're going to uh, tension those cables and then we're going to put the metal building up so all is good here i mean there's so much more i wish i could document but you know i mean there's only so many hours in a day i mean there's no magic this is how it gets done long hours hard work and you know that's that's how construction is anybody in the construction uh, business understands what we're going through right now but hey i'm happy with the end result and i'm 100 percent sure my customer is going to be thrilled about it so anyway uh if you haven't subscribed please do so and i'll see you next week we are texas barnuminiums